Now, if you've been stuck with a base model Alienware X51R2 in its original configuration since its launch in 2014, you may be used to this screen. Thankfully and hopefully, most people have jazzed it up a bit by now with an SSD and maybe some more RAM, but what if you haven't? Well, let's take a look at this 10-year-old time capsule and see what, if anything, can be done with it in 2024. My name's Andy and this is Andy's Tech and I'm back again. Uh, no, in all seriousness, it's been a busy few weeks. I've got engaged, moved house and started another business. So a lot has happened, but here we are. Now, originally I brought this little Alienware X51R2, uh, well, three of them to be precise, for £115. Uh, for the flip up challenge, we started in May. A quick free flips with some minor improvements, uh, but <laughs> despite asking the seller to 100% confirm that these came with the correct 240 watt power brick, he sent me uh, free 65 watt laptop chargers. Oh dear. Um, so yeah, not getting anywhere with the seller. Uh, these are being returned as I'm not going to spend another £30 each for the correct free uh, power supplies. So I thought why not let's take a look quickly at one of these before I ship them back as I do have a 130 watt Dell power supply uh, that will just about work uh, with one of these little 2014 time capsules. Uh, so why don't we see what they can do in 2024? Uh, spoiler alert, uh, not great, uh, but I do love to see what yesteryear's tech can do. And it's fun playing around with stuff I just couldn't afford when it was released. Now on to release and prices. Uh, this was the base model of the X51R2 with a recommended retail price in 2014 of £695. Uh, with spec'd up models reaching like 1500 plus as you do with Alienwares. So what did 695 buy you for your hard-earned cash back then? Well, we have an i3-4150, a 2-core 4-thread Haswell CPU at 3.5GHz. It's got 3 megabytes of cache, not really anything to shout about, uh, even in 2014. Definitely not 10 years on. Uh, there's 6 gigabytes of DDR3. Yes, 6. Uh, I mean, that was a little stingy even back then, I feel. An extra 2 gigabyte wouldn't have cost the world, and, you know, now it's basically pence. Uh, we have two slots with a maximum capacity of 16 gigabytes. Uh, there was originally a 1 terabyte HDD included in the device, but this has been removed, uh, I assume, for for data protection reasons by the previous seller. Uh, we will be running today on an SSD. Uh, in the graphics department, we have a GTX 745, a card not really worthy of the GTX branding and uh, yeah, not exactly punching as well when it was new. Uh, there's four gigabytes of DDR3 uh, with a bus of 128 bits. Uh, on the plus side, if you can really call it that, uh, it's basically a GT1030, uh, kind of. Uh, it has the same shade account, TMU and ROP count, uh, but it's based on the GM107 chip. Uh, this does mean that as of the recording of this video, the card is still just about supported by NVIDIA. Uh, with security updates so we do actually have the latest driver package available i really like the compact design of this case it's smart and functional with a decent array of ports on the front and back a sporting attempt was made at airflow and we do have options for some quite beefy gpu upgrades assuming you have the correct power brick that is as i believe there's two six pin connections inside but we'll have to check that out shortly uh, Dell, sorry Alienware, have also implemented a non-conventional cooling solution, or so I've been told. Uh, Size-wise, if we compare it to the current Xbox Series S, uh, it's a little larger and more akin to its uh, older brother, the Xbox One or the original Xbox One. Uh, that said, it's still compact enough to sit in a TV cabinet without being too intrusive. Removing the side panel, which is done by unscrewing one Phillips head screw and pushing the panel forward. Uh, there is also an RGB connection that needs careful separation. And now we can see the uh, aliens insides. Uh, also, this video isn't sponsored by iFixit, but these are great little toolkits and well recommended. Taking a closer look, we can see our little heatsink calling our i3. Uh, it's a strange configuration as it's pulling air over the CPU and exhausting it out of the back of the case. Uh, 
Uh, removing the plastic surround with the two screws, we can get a better look at the little ITX motherboard. Uh, there's a Wi-Fi card, which is a nice addition. Uh, we can also see our two RAM slots. Uh, the GPU is mounted with a PCI riser card inside this metal cage, which pulls up. Uh, it's only a diddy little thing, but we can see uh, there's uh, plenty of room for a more powerful GPU in here. Uh, you could certainly make use of those two 6-pin PCIe power connections with a suitable power supply. Uh, I do believe you can get a 330 watt brick if needed, uh, but we're stuck here today with my makeshift uh, 130 watt unit. Uh, which should just be enough for our components uh, with some uh, quick crackhead maths that I did earlier. So jumping onto the desktop now and uh, like I said uh, we're running this from an SSD drive. Uh, you can see our little i3 here in CPU Z, our two cores, four threads, three megabytes level three cache running at 3.5 gigahertz. The motherboard is a H87, that makes it a Haswell CPU. Uh, we have PCI Express 3.0 there's our 6 gigabytes of DDR3, which is running in dual channel. It's double data rate, so it's double the uh, 800 shown. Uh, looking at uh, Tech Power Up GPU-Z, you can see our NVIDIA GTX 745. Uh, it's the GM107 graphics processor. There's our 4 gigabytes of DDR3. Uh, there's the shaders and the TMUs. Uh, the card is running in PCIe X. 16 2.0 as it's a PCI 2.0 card, 128 bit bus, and we're running the latest NVIDIA drivers, which is June the 1st, 2024. Now it's worth noting as well, I'm going to put a slight overclock on this card. Uh, I've just done a dirty overclock. Uh, I've put 200 megahertz uh, on the memory and 50 megahertz on the core just to help out our little card a little bit. I do believe this is an overclock achievable uh, by anyone with this card and uh, it shouldn't affect our results too much. If anything, it will only improve them. So I think it's about time we put this thing through its paces and tested some games on it. So sit back and enjoy the benchmarks, folks. So first up we have CS2, a game that any self-respecting budget potato gaming PC should be able to play in 2024. I've gone for 1080p low with FSR set to balanced. Now we're not doing great here, uh, we achieved an average of 34 FPS with 1% of 21 and 0.1% of 16. Now I couldn't really turn things down any lower, so this is kind of what we've got here. To be honest, our little i3 is holding us back here quite a lot, um, and we could definitely see some more performance out of the GTX 745. But also RAM is a limitation as well, having only six gigabytes. I did drop the resolution to 720p to see if that improved things, which it did slightly. Uh, we achieved 36 FPS then uh, with 1% of 22 and 0.1% of 19. I mean, it is above 30 FPS, so it's just about passable, uh, but that's not really a figure you want in an FPS shooter like this. So on my quest to find a game that was playable on this little machine, uh, we then jumped into Fortnite and uh, got our arse completely handed to us. Uh, we went 1080p performance mode, uh, everything set to low. Uh, with resolution set to 60% and uh, yeah not even uh, toasty bros could get away with this result I think. Average okay 65 uh, but the 1% and 0.1% lows were zero. Uh, massive frame hang ups and drops and yeah I couldn't really do anything so RAM's the problem here I would have thought and maybe our little two core i3. So let's move on to something this should be able to run and that is Rocket League and no problem here I went for 1080p with a mix of medium and high and we achieved an average of 89 fps with 1% of 29 and respectable 0.1% of 27 as well. Uh, not really any problems here with Rocket League, uh, it is an older title now and hasn't benefited from uh, the updates like the Unreal Engine 5 on Fortnite uh, which pretty much killed it for, for lower end and these older systems. So if you wanted to play some lighter titles like this, I mean this system's still hanging on in there 10 years later, uh, even with the 6 gigabytes of RAM, um, certainly 2 cores, 4 threads. Uh, is no problem for Rocket League and the little GTX 745 is quite happy as well. Uh, so that's the three games I tested as it is. Now I was interested to see what would happen if we 
added a cheeky upgrade to it, which is something that most people would have considered along the lines. And that is to add uh, a 16 gigabyte kit of DDR3 RAM, uh, just to see how things improved. So I'm gonna do that now, get this kit fitted, and then we'll jump back into the games and see if that uh, slight upgrade has just improved things. Now CS2, this didn't really make a difference. Uh, we gained a couple of FPS on the average, and a couple of FPS on the 1%, and we actually lost a couple of FPS on the 0.1%. Now, CS2 is a CPU-dependent title, and really that little i3 is the thing that's holding us back. Uh, we have used a couple more gigabytes of RAM, so it has made use of that, but really, it's not really made any difference here. Now, the one game that it did make the most difference was Fortnite. Now, I, I say improved, uh, it did improve our average. Uh, we went up to 85 FPS. Uh, the 1% was still pretty terrible at three and the 0.1% at two. Uh, there were still lots of random spikes and stutters and frame drops. Uh, really, that is down to our little two core i3. Uh, we did make use of the RAM more. We're using nearly nine gigabytes now, so it was hungry for RAM. Uh, but really nothing is going to save that little i3 from the uh, slow and painful death it is experiencing in 2024. Now just out of curiosity, I did cap the game to 60 FPS and uh, this did improve things quite a lot. Uh, the 1% jumped up to the 30s and it did make the experience a lot more playable. Still not something really I'd recommend. So we'll move on to Rocket League and we did see a slight improvement here. Uh, again, the uh, the RAM usage jumped to just over 8 gigabytes, so it did need a little more RAM. Uh, the average jumped up to 94 FPS, with the 1% improving to 33, and the 0.1% going to 25. Uh, I mean, it was playable before Rocket League, uh, but it has definitely helped a bit, uh, really. You know, with the hardware we're using, the GPU's pretty much being fully utilised by the little i3, so we're not going to get much more out of that. I mean, definitely as well today, I think the slight overclock has made a difference, as we have improved the memory speed, like 200 megahertz, and when running with an old DDR3 uh, card like this, uh, any increase is a good thing. So that will bring us to the end of the benchmarks and to the conclusion of the video. Would I recommend that you went out and brought something like this Alienware in 2024? Not really. Uh, I mean, it would make an awesome little retro console and certainly anything sort of pre-2015. This little PC in its current state will play absolutely fine. Uh, you could make some cheap upgrades like replacing the i3 to an i7. That would improve things massively. Still a great chip, uh, the fourth core Haswell i7s. You know, they do make good budget PCs still. Uh, replacing that GPU as well, uh, if you had the correct power brick, would be something, you know, a GTX 1060 or a 1660. Uh, it'd be really interesting to see what a little system like this would do with like an RX 6600 and fourth gen Haswell. Uh, that would be something I'd like to see. Uh, but unfortunately today, I have to return the system and I can't really be pulling it apart and changing things around and then sending it back to the seller. I did try to get the correct power bricks out of the seller, but he wasn't having any of it and he wasn't even gonna offer a discount. So quite frankly, he can have them back. We've had our fun today. Little bit cheeky, but there you go. A uh, quick note as well on general usage, uh, this PC is still completely fine to use Windows. So if you wanted something that was a little bit different, uh, just to do some schoolwork, watch some YouTube videos, go onto Discord, etc. Something like this would be perfectly fine. Uh, but that will bring us to the end of the video today. Thank you for watching. Sorry about the little bit of the delay. Life's got busy. I'll try to get back to regular content as soon as I can. Uh, thank you for watching as always. Take care. Really appreciate the support. Leave a like or a comment, subscribe if you haven't done so already. God bless you and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Cheers.